Wow. I, I'm sp speechless. I don't even know what to say. Good afternoon. So this is the bird photography challenge that I've been wanting to do for a while. And I think the winter time is the perfect time to start it. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna spin a wheel that's filled with different bird species. And these are birds that either I've never seen before, either I've seen but don't really have any good photos of, or birds that I just love to photograph in the winter time and I'd love to find them again. The goal is whatever species I land on, I have to go out, find it and photograph it, no questions asked, no matter how long it takes me or this video doesn't end. So it could take me a day, a week, a month, a year, 10 years. If you're watching this in 2032, for the love of God, send me help. So this is the state of the art wheel. As you can see, there's about a dozen species here, a good mix of road birds, some winter favorites, some owls, and all I have to do is hit that little button and whatever it lands on, that's what we're going for. So, I don't know if you can see me, but solid owl, kind of nervous, kind of excited for this. It would be a life for me. I've never seen one. I hope I can find one fairly quickly. Oh my gosh. Well, wish me luck. I'm going to get started in the morning. I'm going to do some research right now, try to find some locations to go to. I'm excited to finally get this one off my list though. Like I mentioned in my last video, owls are a group of birds that I don't go looking for too often. But last winter, I did have some success with finding three of the more common owl species. Screech, Great Horned, and Bard. But the Sawwood Owl will likely be my biggest challenge of the bunch, just because they're the smallest owl we have in Quebec. After reading through some field guides and some articles, it seems like my best bet was to start searching around conifer stands close to a body of water. There's usually greater prey abundance around a water source, which means a higher likelihood of finding these predatory birds. By having this search criteria, it means I can cover more ground in a shorter amount of time and only stop in areas where I'm likely to find a sawwit owl. This was the perfect plan because I'm always laser focused and never under any circumstance ever get distracted. Oh my god, there's a bluebird right there. Uh, will it work? Oh, brown thrasher calling. Down really low. Oh, great blue heron. There he goes. Right now towards the yellow rumped warbler. The yellow rumped warbler right there, sorry. Use the post as an intermediate and did I just hear a song sparrow? The first morning was no different. Well, uh, well this is bad. I know I'm supposed to be looking for solid owls and we're 15 minutes in and I'm already distracted. There's two great horned owls up here and I thought finding the solid would take me a day or two but I forgot to factor in that I'm always distracted by other birds and wildlife so it'd probably take me longer but good for sighting. I'm not going to take too long on here. I'm going to try to trek through and find the good spots for the solids but I'll show you this quickly. Look at that beautiful first sighting of the day. Two great horned owls. Awesome. One of the things I didn't mention yesterday when the wheel landed on Sawwood Owl was that it's kind of a, I wouldn't really say it's a nemesis bird for me because I've never gone out specifically to look for it, but it is one of those birds where things just never quite lined up. I was in their habitat a lot, especially when I was doing wildlife surveys and other teams would see them and my team would not. So it's kind of a bird that I've been wanting to see for a while and just never took the time to do so. And honestly, I just want to get the monkey off my back. I don't know if this has happened to you where you can go years without seeing a species and then you find it for the first time and then you start seeing it everywhere. This happened to me quite a few times with a bunch of different species. So my goal is really to just find a solid owl. I just want to find one. The odds of me finding one are good. The odds of me finding one and getting a good photo for the first time probably pretty low but I'm not going to stress too much about the photos I just want to actually oh it's a robin oh there's robins here feeding in buckthorns it's actually a few of them yeah so I'm not stressing too much about the photos let me just find one first okay we'll find one and then we'll worry about it they're usually from what I'm seeing in a bunch of photos tucked in pines pretty well so it's going to be a little bit difficult to get a clean shot but I'll think about that when I find it you know I'm not going to stress too much about that now so maybe I'll Photo nah. 
I'm always in this dilemma. Do I stop for, for robins or not? They'll be here all winter. No, I won't stop. Wow, a morning dove just gave me a heart attack. I'll go get the camera to show you. But it, I thought it was a solid owl. It was perched on a branch. It was about the same size, just kind of bunched up there. So you couldn't really see the shape of the of the morning dove. And then just got my binoculars on it and not a solid owl. Jeez. I got really excited there for a second. After a few more hours of searching the conifers, I decided to call it early since the next day I had three other locations to visit. Good morning. Day two, first location. Sadly, it looks like it's gonna be a sunny day today. There's a few clouds, but once those pass, it's gonna be bright blue skies. So I have a very limited amount of time before I can find a solid owl and have decent light. But even if the sun does come out, I'm still gonna visit every location, even though the light won't be too great, just to see if I can actually find one. Because if I can find one, then I can come back tomorrow, earlier in the morning, and hopefully get some shots of it. Also, I thought of something last night. When I was importing the footage and the photos of the great horned owls, I realized that on the wheel that I spun to get the solid owl, there was a great horned owl on that list. And if I did land on it, and I would have went yesterday to that same park, the video would have been done in about two minutes. So it made me think in the future, I mean, if you like these videos and if I do another one, what I'll do is if I land on a bird that I photographed before and that I know where they hang out, what I'll do to challenge myself is to visit somewhere I've never been to before and try to find that specific species. Just so the video is not one minute long and it's like the wheel lands on Great Horned Owl and I'm like, oh, Great Horned Owl, thanks for watching. You know, I wanna challenge myself. I wanna visit new locations. about two minutes away from leaving this location and right in this field here before you get to the parking lot I just saw three snow buntings which were also on that wheel that I spun so I feel like I'm experiencing some cruel joke where I'll probably see every species on that list besides the solid owl Although the snow buntings were a nice bonus, I still got skunked at the second location. And the third location. And the fourth location. There's some conifers right in front of me. And I'm just making sure I'm checking every tree, following every branch to make sure that there's not one sitting there. It could be right in front of me and I can easily miss it. Who would have thought finding owls would be so tough? It's not like they evolved to blend into their surroundings perfectly or anything. But on the third day, during a beautiful winter snowfall, my luck would completely change. I, I'm sp speechless. I don't even know what to say. I got here super early in the morning, way too dark to see anything in any other conifers. So I decided to just walk around, do a loop and see where the good spots are for the sawwets. And after about an hour of looping around and finally coming back to one of the spots that looked really good, there was just two birders there and they were like, do you want to see a solid owl? And I was like, ooh, 
that's a that's a loaded question yes i do want to see a solid owl and they took me about two meters off of the trail and just pointed and this beautiful solid owl was eye level sitting on a rodent and there was this beautiful ring of snow around it just glorious like oh, it was perfect and i made sure that i watched it and watched its behavior because when we got there its eyes were closed so it was roosting it was resting it was fine and i just wanted to make sure it stayed that way so if its eyes were starting to open and it started staring at you and looking frantically you can kind of tell you're either a little bit too close or you're being a little bit too loud but i was using this with 600 millimeters plenty of crops plenty of zooms so I got some very, very nice shots. There were a few times where people were walking behind us on the trail that made a little bit of noise, so it kind of opened its eyes a little bit, but besides that, rested perfectly fine. I'm, yeah, I don't even know what to say. I never imagined my first sighting of a sawwit would be this perfect. I can finally cross this species off my list and hopefully my bird luck continues in the coming weeks. Before I go, I'd just like to thank the sponsor of this video, Skillshare. Skillshare is an online learning community with thousands of inspiring classes for creatives. One of the things I love about Skillshare is that they have a wide variety of topics to learn about. So whether you're into photography, filmmaking, editing, and so much more, they've got you covered. I'm always looking to level up my skills and one class I recently enjoyed was iPhone photography, how to take pro photos on your iPhone by Dale McManus. Oftentimes in the field, I come across a beautiful landscape or an interesting insect and all I have on me is my cell phone. I like this class because it covers the entire process from the settings to the composition to the techniques and the editing. There's so many other classes just like this one that are easy to follow with no ads and new premium classes are added every week so there's always something new to learn about. And right now, we're giving away free one-month trials of Skillshare Premium Memberships to the first thousand of my subscribers that join using the link below. So check it out, there's a bunch of amazing learning opportunities, and thanks again to Skillshare for sponsoring this video.